Okay, I'm back. And guess what? We're going to do hyperbolic functions. Hyperbolic functions. As you can see on your screen, we have y equals to a over x minus p plus q, where a tells us something, p tells us something, and q tells us something. So in this video, we're going to know how to draw this function, and we're going to also learn how to find an equation from this function and how to interpret this function. So basically, I'm going to teach you all there is to know about hyperbolic functions. Welcome back, concept getters. Let's start. Let's say we have y is equal to a over x minus p plus q. Now, before anything, you guys have to understand what A is. I mean, guys, this is A at the top there. This is A, guys. We have to understand what A tells us. And we also have to understand what P tells us. And also, we have to understand what Q tells us. Okay? Once we know what A tells us, once we know what P and Q also tell us, guys, hyperbolics are going to be easy. Hyperbolics are going to be easy. They're going to be a walk in the park. Okay? So let's say um, I'm going to have to draw a graph, right? I'm going to make it a bit nice here. Let's say I'm drawing a straight line, right? I'm drawing a straight line, which is going to be my Cartesian plane, where I have the x and the y axis, okay? So hyperbolic functions are those functions. Have you seen those functions that look like this? That look like this. You draw in this quadrant and this quadrant and if you don't if you don't draw in those quadrants you're either gonna draw them like this or like this in here and in here did you know those those graphs those are your hyperbolic graphs guys and how do you identify them when you see when you see x being the denominator as long as x is under a division line you see this line as long as x is under a division line of which is it is a denominator just know that that graph or that function will be a hyperbolic function okay that's how you identify them so now how do i know where to draw my graphs that's where now the a comes into play so guys when your a is greater than zero when your a is positive okay just know that every time when your a is positive if you have your asymptotes or your Cartesian plane, you will always draw your graphs where? In these two quadrants, okay? But when your A is less than zero, when your A is negative, right? Then you're going to draw your graph where? In these two quadrants. In this quadrant and this quadrant. Do that make sense? So basically, let's go to that big, you know, that big, 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 big on your right, that big, big, big Cartesian plane. Let's go there. In here, you draw when your A is less than zero. When your A is less than zero. But in here, you're going to draw when your A is greater than zero. Okay, so A tells us the shape of your function and it also tells you where to draw your graph. That's out of the way, okay? So sometimes they will also teach you that A, the bigger the A, the more this, uh, the, the curve will be either closer to the, uh, to the origin or further away from the origin. Ah, guys, we don't care about those. We don't care about those right now, especially when you're writing in the exam. They're not going to ask. It's okay. Let them teach you, you know. Be taught, especially if you want to continue with math. Be taught. But remember, this video, guys, is for, for, for me trying to make math easy and to make you pass math. And everything else, huh, we'll learn. I mean, come on, teach us, teach those things. Right now, just know that A is telling me where to draw the graph, and that's it, okay? So now that you know what A tells you, we're going to go straight to P and Q. Have you heard of the concept asymptote? Asymptote is nothing but that line that is cut, that line that is like this, that is cut. You know that line? That's what we call an asymptote. An asymptote is the line where a graph only approaches but never touches. Okay, so our P and our Q will give us the asymptotes. P, because it's next to X, it will give us the X asymptote. And Q, right, 
will obviously just give us the y asymptote. Okay, so now you're going to say, if they're looking for the equations of asymptote, you're just going to say x is equal to p and y equals to q. So when the value of p and the value of q are given, you just substitute them on p and q. And how do you draw the lines of asymptotes? Those are vertical and horizontal lines of which those lines are going to be cut. Or we can call them dotted lines. Okay, so our hyperbolic graphs, right, are going to are going to be drawn based on where your asymptotes are. So when I say, remember here when I was talking about A, look at this dot here and here. You saw I drew, I drew um, dotted lines, meaning when I say in the first or third, second or fourth quadrants, that's where we draw our hyperbolic function. I was talking about the quadrants made by the asymptotes, not the original Cartesian plane, okay, but by the asymptote. Do that make sense? So now, now that you get that, let's actually, you know, let's let's use a real example, right? I'm just gonna draw one one of the functions or maybe two of them in this video just to show you how to draw them, right? And then how to get the equation. Same video. I know it's long, but guys, you want to learn everything in one video. Come on. What did you expect? So let's move. So now that we are here on a clean slate, let me give you. Any example, right? Let me just use this one, okay? Let's say we have y equals to, now I'm going to use positive 2 over x minus 3 plus, let's say, 4, right? Remember, I said that, remember, look at 2. Remember, I said that if a is greater than 0, it means it's positive, right? Which means I'm going I'm to draw where? I'm going to draw here. I'm going to draw in here. Do that make sense? So you're just going to say shape. That's going to be your first step, right? You're going to say shape. Then you write everything that I just wrote and you're going to get your mark. Okay. Then the second step, you're going to say my asymptotes. Second step, you're going to say asymptotes. Asymptotes, right? Then you're going to say x minus 3 equals to 0. This one here, guys, you see this one, this one, the denominator. You take it as a binomial as it is, then you, you equate it to zero, then you make x the subject of the formula, then you're going to say my asymptote will be positive 3, because when you transpose negative 3 to the other side of the equal sign, it will change from being negative to being positive, okay? Then with this one, the last one you see here on the equation, the last one, the 4, you just say y equals to that 4, straight up, say y equals to 4, then you get your x asymptote and your y asymptote. So let's draw them on the side, okay? Let's say we had our graph. Let's say this is my Cartesian plane, right? And then I have another Cartesian plane, right? Then I'm going to say, let's start with my asymptotes, okay? I'll say if I have a 3 here, right? If I have a 3 here, then my asymptote will be like this. It will just pass 3, right? And if I had a 4 here on Y here, Remember, if I had a 4, then my y asymptote will pass the y axis like this. It will be a straight line. Do I make sense? Which means I have new quad, uh, quad quadrants, right? This is the new origin, right? In here, it's my first quadrant, third, second, fourth. But I don't need those ticks because I need to draw there. So now I know that my graph will be in which ones? It will be in this one and this one because I set it here. Remember on A, I set it here. Makes sense. So I know that's where I'm going to draw. And if I'm going to draw in that and that quadrant, which means my graph will automatically cut the Y axis somewhere here and the X axis somewhere here. Do I make sense? So if it's going to cut the X and the Y axis, I will have to determine the X intercept and the Y intercept before I draw. So guys, we know, we know the old school, the old school way of finding the X intercept and the Y intercept. How, Mr. Say? How? In order to get the X intercept, you let Y to be zero. To get the Y intercept, you let X to be zero. So we can find them, right? Remember, you're going to say for Y intercept, let x to be zero right so obviously where i see x i will substitute by zero so i'll say y is equals to 2 over 0 minus 3 plus 4 
then y equals to what? 2 over negative 3 is a negative 2 over 3. Then if I add it on to 4, you're going to use a calculator, guys. What you going to get? What you going to get? Huh? What you going to get? Obviously, you're going to get 3 comma 3 recurring, which is basically 3 comma 3. Remember, you're going to punch in your calculator, okay? Then once you get the y-intercept, you go to the y-axis on your Cartesian plane. You'll realize that you probably have like, let's say, 1 two maybe three here right so three comma three will be on top of three if this is three it will be somewhere here i will use red this is somewhere here so your graph will be approaching this asymptote here and going like this okay so now let's find the x intercept okay let's find the x intercept because remember guys it's gonna go this way but then we don't know where it's gonna cut on the x axis so let's find the x intercept for x intercept you're gonna say for x intercept you let y to be zero, right? Then you're going to say z y is zero equals to two over x minus three plus four, right? Then you solve for x. You solve for x. Once you solve that x, guys, you're going to get what? You're going to get x is equal to 2,5. Remember, it's algebra. You're going to transpose 4. Then you make x the subject of the formula. You know, you know, you know. Then you're going to get 2,5. So when we go to the Cartesian plane, you'll realize that we have 1 here, 2 here. And if this is 3 here, which is where your asymptote passes, then between 2 and 3, we have 2,5. So this is where it's going to be. It's going to be here, which means your graph will cut here and go like this. Then you will analyze the space. You see this space here? The space between the origin and the curve here. Then you make sure that you have almost uh, the same amount of space on the other, on the alternate quadrant. Remember? Then you're going to draw your graph like that. You're just going to imitate. I, I normally start with the arrows like this and the arrows like this to show that they're approaching the asymptotes, but they're not cutting the asymptote. Then I connect the arrows and curve based on the space. But then remember the blue thing that I, that I did, this blue thing here, here, don't draw it, okay? This is just to show you that the spaces should be a bit equal. This is how you draw the, para, the, the hyperbolic function, guys. Let's recap, right? Number one, you determine the shape. Number two, you get the asymptotes, which are your P and Q, right? Then you get the Y-intercept. You get the X-intercept. If they are there, they are there. If they are not, then it means they are not there. That's it, you, which means you're not going to plot them. But then you need only four of those things. The shape, where to draw your graph, the asymptotes, right? Where the lines that the graph won't touch but will approach and where it's going to cut your y-axis and where it's going to cut your x-axis, right? So the next part of this video, now the last part, I know by now you already see the picture. You probably not, won't even finish the video. But I know you will. Come on, guys. Because you want to know how to find the equation when the graph is gotten or it's given, right? So, let's say we are given the graph, okay? Sorry for wasting your data, but I'm going to draw it with you here. Let's say they draw it, they draw it like this. Then, then this is our Cartesian planes. Then let's say they give us the asymptotes. Let's say the asymptote were like this, okay? Let's say the asymptotes are like this. And then another asymptote is like this. Makes sense. Let's say they cut here. Let's say they cut at negative 2 and at 1 on the y-axis. Remember, this is our y and this is our x. And they have arrows like this, okay? Let's say our graph was like this, right? Uh, let's say our graph was like this right it's cutting here and here and then our graph was like this let's say we have that graph they give us the asymptotes and they gave us maybe one point let's say that our graph they said uh, the coordinate of a here is let's say it's um let's say um uh, two and zero they give us the x-intercept okay so if we are given the asymptotes on that general formula, which is y is equals to a over x minus p plus q. Remember, they, they won't necessarily give you this formula, right? But as long as you see a shape of this kind or a graph of this kind, you know, you go straight to this formula, you write it down, you get your free mark, okay? Then you're going to say, I already have my p and q. This p here that you see, guys, 
this P and Q are basically just your X asymptote and your Y asymptote. I already have them. All I need to do is substitute them. Come on. Like, really now? So now that you know them, you just go straight to substituting them, okay? Then you go straight to saying, oh, well, I have my P and Q. So let me just do this. Y equals to A over X minus what's the value of my P? My P is the one, is this one where your asymptote is cutting there x exists right so i'm gonna substitute it with its sign it's negative two so i'm gonna write negative two okay then i'm gonna say plus what's the value of my q my q is this one where my asymptote is cutting there y exists so it's positive one so i'm gonna write y so when i write it properly it's gonna be y equals to a over x remember negative times negative will give me positive so i have two then plus y easy right now that i have my p and q all i need is a to conclude the function okay in order to get a you need another point on the graph so we can see that they gave us the x-intercept x-intercept on the graph let's look at the graph we have x-intercept which is a where they gave us two and zero which are the x value and the y value so on the function where i see x I will substitute by 2. Where I see Y, I'll substitute by 0. Ah, guys, this is easy. Okay, let's just do it. You know, let's just do it. So we're going to say 0 for Y equals to A over X is what? 2. Then plus 2 plus 1. Right? 2 plus 2 is what? Is 4. 2 plus 2 is 4. Go to do pa. Oh, okay. No, never mind. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. So we're going to transpose 1 and it's going to be negative 1 equals to A over four right then in order to remove the denominator come on this is algebra guys in order to re remove the denominator guys this is algebra in order oh, come on guys so we're going to multiply by four both sides right and i'm going to multiply by four here i'm going to have negative four equals to a because this one will cancel this one now our function is concluded we can write it let's write it in in red in red in red so we're gonna say our y is equal to what it's equals to negative 4 over x plus 2 then plus 1 this is our function guys now recap on something remember i said when a is negative look at the numerator there when a is negative obviously when a is negative i said we draw here and here right so look at our graph. It's in the second and fourth quadrants of our asymptotes. Do you see it? Of our asymptotes. And that's it. So if you were to get a positive A, you would know that you made a mistake. You go check and then you do the right thing. Come on, guys. Our public functions are easy. You know how to draw the graph when they gave you the equation. And now you know how to find the equation when the graph is given. Everything else. Ah, guys. Ah, guys. This is all you need to know about hyperbolic functions. Everything else is just interpretations of graphs. And we're going to do them in one of the coming videos. But you know what? I am out.